Welcome to the Welcome. Invest the Difference podcast. We're going to talk about how to grow and scale your life and business by investing in and doubling down on difference makers. So whether it's mindset growth, tactical business strategies, or identifying your unique edge, let's invest the difference and change the world. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Invest the Difference podcast. I am here with my psycho co-host. Hello. An eccentric business partner, (laughs) Claudio Gambin. Welcome back to our solo episodes. Yeah. We have a lot of guests this season, so I felt like we should probably do something, just you and I. Yeah. Yeah. Um, It is fun. I really enjoy these solo episodes. And in all transparency, sometimes we roll in and we're like, hmm, what are we talking about today? But it always devolves or evolves into something yeah. <laughs> really, yeah, really worthwhile, hopefully, for all of you all listening. But not today. Not today. Not today. We came prepared today. We did come prepared today. Uh, we've got, we really want to talk about something that's kind of close to our hearts. This year uh, for us in, in life and in business has been through, uh, working through a lot of transitions Mm -hmm. you know me personally i I sold a house bought a new house remodeled lived to like six different places in the process because the house isn't ready in time and you are developing and growing your farm from just you know chickens and eggs to meat birds and goats and (laughs) all kinds of you know bunnies and now there's a noah's ark rule there is a Noah's Rock. Uh, our business continues to evolve and grow, um, taking on the next step to really kind of continue to further our, and get closer to our vision. So, and it's the middle of Q4. I feel like it's just a good opportunity for us to look at transition and look at like, hey, what what are some of the pain points involved with transition in business life? Yeah. What are we identifying as our difference makers and our margins, and how you know what are we doing, and how can we kind of provide some some insight? Mm-hmm. Uh, through this for our audience. Yeah, I I always feel that in times of transition, and it's really interesting um, how even just the change of seasons can bring transition for us that is difficult, the time change. I love it. First of all, I like it in the mornings. I really, really hate it at night. Yes, agreed. Um. But it's hard, right? Well, I mean, it's 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 hard for me anyway. Like to be getting home in pitch black darkness. I was bringing the kids home last night, and it was only like six fifteen. Mm-hmm. I had picked them up from the babysitter. We we're heading home. Gates conked out in the back seat instantly, and Presley's like, "Oh my gosh, mommy, we're getting to stay up late tonight, huh?" And I was like, "No, sweetheart, it's actually not even dinner time yet." <laughs> She's like, whoa. And then I had to have a whole conversation with her about the time change, which try yeah. having a conversation with a seven-year-old about <laughs> why the time changes and what that means. But um, yeah, I think in, in times of transition, things get messy, they get difficult, and they get challenging sometimes. But as as we're taking this next step in the business and growing in some really meaningful ways, it causes some confusion. It causes some fogginess. It causes some um, moments for things to either go really, really well and for us to be able to double down on our difference makers like our house rules and clarifying the vision, hiring the right people. You know, it's always an opportunity, I think, too, to make sure that we've got the right butts and the right seats. Mm -hmm. But there's also the other path where if you're not careful, it can create more uncertainty. It can create confusion instability for for your employees and like what's happening where are we going why are we doing this and so i think it'll be good to talk today through how to make sure um you're going down the correct path and how to identify maybe when things are not when they're too foggy and how to navigate through that yeah i i think both paths are inevitable yeah i think like um you know as a good friend of mine says you have to associate pain with growth mm-hmm. And the, the, the more you can associate pain with growth, the more comfortable you will be in the chaotic path that is life. Mm-hmm. So I think both paths happen. And they are mutually inclusive in the sense that you cannot have one without the other. Like you cannot have the opportunity to double down on growth without creating confusion and chaos, mm-hmm. right? So like 
it really comes down to like managed chaos, mm-hmm. whatever that looks like. And for us, as we take this next level in the business to really continue to chase our vision, right? So like, I feel like in life, we're going down this highway and we have these like pre-planned exits, right? The GPS tells you like, oh, you're in 1.3 miles. You're mm-hmm. going to get off on exit 48. Well, sometimes like shit happens in front of you and you have to take an earlier exit. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of like what happened in the business for us. Like we had an opportunity to make a decision to accelerate this path mm-hmm. and we took it. Mm-hmm. And we now we're doing it in a way that creates confusion. It creates lack of clarity. So frankly, what we need to do at this point is slow down, mm-hmm. right? Like, and that's what we were talking about yesterday is like, it's super foggy out. And when it's super foggy out, you slow down. Yeah, tell you, everybody you, about this no, little like moment. You, you, you pay attention. You pay attention to what you're doing. And uh, because y- you have to, mm-hmm. right? Like, so right now in life for me and in business for me and for us, it's foggy. Mm-hmm. So which means that like in this path that we're going, it's uncharted waters. It's incredibly foggy. We don't know what's happening in front of us. So naturally we slow down so that we can become better. Mm-hmm. We slow down so that we can pay more attention mm-hmm. to what we're doing. And through that, it increases stress, right? But that stress is a positive response for us to be able to deliver exceptional results, Yeah. period. And I think that's that's like perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. It's a perfectly fine season to be in as long as it's not a permanent season, mm-hmm. right? Like, if, How do you identify like if this is like, it's we, it's been going on for too long? I, I think there's a physiological response. Right. Like Mm -hmm. I think if you become if you are in this zone in this season for too long, that's where you really start getting into that burnout mode. Mm -hmm. Right. Like you start getting both like in business and in life, you become disenchanted with whatever you're doing. The passion goes away. You stop paying attention to the things that you love to do. You know, like, frankly, I love to fish, as we all know. (laughs) I haven't been fishing in two months. Yeah. Right. It's fine. But it, if I go like a year without fishing, like, okay, something's going on. Yeah. Not because like I have to go fish, but it's like what's happening in business that's not allowing mm-hmm. me to have the flexibility to go enjoy some of my passions in mm-hmm. life. So that's how I, that to me, that's how I would measure it, right? Like, so personally, quick background, sold our house in April. We were buying a new house. There needed to be remodeled, needed some things that need to be fixed. That process was supposed to be a 90-day process, turned into a six-month process. <laughs> seven month process pretty normal in the construction right. <laughs> world but like what what created chaos in our life was we sold our home too soon like we got the offer we needed and we sold it and mm-hmm. we were like in this transition period so we literally hopped from like Airbnb to Airbnb to Airbnb and they created this chaos mm-hmm. and that season just lasted too long yeah where it started impacting some of your internals it, it, you know, I wasn't following my routine, mm-hmm. my my personal motivation wasn't there, my tone in life wasn't there, mm-hmm. my my passion, like all that. Yeah. Right. So that's to me like that's also another layer of it. Like you cannot have more than one level of managed chaos in your life. Right. So like personally, professionally, financially, mm-hmm. if your financial life right now is in managed chaos, <laughs> <laughs> you probably should not go remodel a house. Right. <laughs> if you're if you're remodeling a house, you probably should not go make a financial move that's going to put your financial situation in managed chaos. So like those are all like unspoken rules that you learn through grow- g- growing through it. Right. Not going through it, but growing through it. Right. Oh, I should trademark that. Right. Sorry. <laughs> but like those are unspoken rules that you learn mm-hmm. growing through this. But no one ever like comes back and talks about it. Like right. if, if I go sit down with people that have gone through this, they're not going to be like, oh, don't do too much. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. Well, there's, there's this aspect of um, just – go, 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 do, 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 do more, work more, invest more, all the things. Um, and that's important at a healthy level, right? And the other thing that I think you've done really well and where I see the most successful people um, continuing to do this, they, they have a level of self-awareness where you're able to recognize the burnout mode. You're mm-hmm. able to recognize when, okay, hold on a minute, I need to take a step back and reevaluate 
what's going on in life so that the burnout doesn't turn into something worse. Um, so for the for those of you listening, um, he kind of like breezed over it real quick, but he had this really cool story yesterday talking to a lot of the advisors in our office about how he was sitting on his back patio and he's got this gorgeous view over a lake, but it was really foggy. And down here in Florida, we get a lot of fog this time of year. It was obstructing his view. And he was like, damn it, I can't see my lake. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he said, you know, it was in that moment that it made me realize when things are foggy for us and we can't see the future clearly or we can't see what we want really clearly, what is our natural response, right? Like naturally, if you're driving in fog, you slow down. You put both hands on the steering wheel. You focus a little bit more clearly and intently and you um, you pay more attention, and that was the lesson that we were trying to impart upon a lot of our advisors that are, you know, walking alongside us in this period of change and growth in the business, which, um, you know, is we never want to discount how it's going to impact them because it will as much as it does us. Um, and while all of these things we know on the other side are going to be really cool and exciting and great for the business, the things that have to happen in the middle to get us there um, – can be frustrating. It can be annoying. It can get foggy. And it's easy sometimes if you're if you're not steadfast in understanding why you're going where you're going, if you don't slow down, put both hands on the wheel and just pay extra close attention, it could be easy for somebody to give up, to quit, to go a different direction. Um, and so that's what we were really trying to help them understand was um, now more than ever, as we're making this change, it's such a great and I think it's important to have um, little rest stops along the way in this highway of life of where you're just pausing and you're getting off the road and you're resting. reevaluating. Yep. You're resting, you're reevaluating, you know, for our advisors in particular, I think it's like a great time for them to reevaluate the books of business and, um, you know, how are, we, how are they going to market? What is the value that they're providing to the clients? How are they delivering at a really, really high level? And so all of those, this is such a good time for them now to be focusing on that and, and, um, paying closer attention attention. Um, you so, know, what's yeah. not said is when you are paying closer attention and you are focused more intently, you tire quicker. Mm -hmm. Right. Certainly. So like <clears throat> in periods of managed chaos, like we're talking about in this foggy season, you tire quicker. Mm -hmm. So it's even more important for you to turn off, get into the rest areas, take a minute, take a beat, so that you can get back because the last thing you need right now and we can go like macro here okay and we will but the last thing you need right now in this season is to make a mistake or an error because you're you're tired yeah right it's like making long-term decisions off short-term exactly emotions. that's exactly where i was heading high five that's my ah. Hand. I can't high five with this hand still. Why? Because I oh, the stab, stab myself. Stab yeah. my, oh, that's the stabby hand. That's the stabby hand. <laughs> <laughs> but my point is like even at a macro level, right? Like let's just say you're not a business owner. Let's just say it's just life. Mm -hmm. At a macro level, like we can we we all feel this economy slowing down. Mm -hmm. It is a foggy season for our economy. It is a foggy season for our country. Yeah. Right? Like with wars about to get even and like, foggier next year. Right. But like <laughs> It's all more the reason to pay attention to this transition. Yeah. Like the country, the economy, every, you know, interest rates, the banking system, everything is actually going through a transition as we speak. Mm -hmm. It's foggy for everybody. Like pay attention to what's happening. Mm -hmm. Like it's more important for you to pay attention today than it has ever been because it's not just about what could go wrong. It's about what opportunities are you just breezing by? Do you have any advice on how people can, like, if they're if, if this is not something that they've practiced before, this is slowing down and paying attention, how do people pay attention more? I think people need to, it, it's, it's frankly less about paying attention mm -hmm. and more about less numbing. Okay. Like, if you can just use an opportunity to numb yourself less mm -hmm. with whatever you choose to numb yourself with. You mean like social media? Any, scrolling. like any distraction, okay. any distraction. Like, like, for example, social media, right? That's a distraction. Yep. Uh, some people like social events too much. Mm -hmm. They go out to 
dinner and drinks, happy hour, like all the time. Mm -hmm. That's what they choose to numb with. Or mm -hmm. some other people choose to numb with getting very, very busy. Like, oh my God, I thought you were about to say chickens. Some people use chick, you know, they buy like every weekend they buy an animal and that's what they choose to numb with. You know, if it's not a goat, it's a bunny. If it's not a bunny, it's a chicken. If it's not a chicken, it's a pig. But, but it's true. It's true. Yeah. Whether you like to hear it or not, like getting, creating busyness mm -hmm. in life and confusing movement with progress is a numbing technique. Mm. Right. So mm -hmm. like I used to numb myself with not wanting to be home mm. like i would want to be doing something all the time yeah which never left me any time to sit down and not do anything yeah in that free space is where you find clarity and you pay yeah. attention yeah right so yeah numbing happens in a lot of different ways right and i think if you numb less mm -hmm. you give yourself the margin to pay attention and that's all you really need yeah and that's the hard part burn because the minute you find yourself bored Mm -hmm. then you go find something to numb. Like, yeah. But like, you just got to get through that like initial 30 seconds of boredom. Right. I think you said something really, really important there. The free space, the white space is where you find clarity and you're able to pay attention or you're able to get creative and come up with a new idea. Um, and it's, I find myself having a hard time with that too. I like, there's something about the busyness you feel important or needed or like I'm working hard, but just doing stuff does not necessarily mean you're making progress and mm -hmm. actually go moving forward. Um, and I have tried to be really intentional on the weekends of having a couple of hours to just sit in quiet with the family on the couch and like open the doors to the outside, enjoy some coffee, no TV, no news, no videos, no screens, nothing. And we just sit around and like have some breakfast, coffee and talk to each other. Mm -hmm. And I have moments where I'm sitting there and I feel so antsy, like, wow, what else could I be doing with this time? Yeah. You're like you have to move. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or in, even in the car, I find myself doing this all the time in the car, music and listening to things is another numbing activity. Yeah. But if you ever have the opportunity to just drive in silence for 45 minutes, where your mind goes is really it's amazing. It's beautiful. Yes. It's truly beautiful. I, you know, now that I live out in the sticks like you, um, <laughs> <clears throat> I have a 30, 35 minute drive in every day. Mm -hmm. Today was an hour and 10 minutes, but <laughs> it's, I don't really do anything but like sit with myself. Is I I four is your only way in? Is um no. If I if I drop Coco at school, then I go down I four. If I don't, I go four seventeen to four oh eight. Oh okay. It's that's a little okay. bit more efficient. Um, but that's like it's a beautiful opportunity for you to just have free think. Yeah. You know, and and one of the most successful people that have ever lived, Henry Ford, that was like his famous tagline. Mm -hmm. You know, he who works all day has no time to make money. Mm -hmm. Which translate like he who is busy all the time doesn't have time to get creative to think about how to actually do shit. Yeah. Like if you're busy all the time, you don't have time to, to get better. Yeah. So I don't know. I just think like transition is key, mm -hmm. right? Uh, like associate pain with growth. Transition is important. Manage chaos. Like it also like I know people who myself probably included who like need chaos to survive mm -hmm. you know like yeah i make a joke with melissa all the time that like if we're getting along too well we'll just like say something stupid <laughs> to get in a fight just to like make sure that we're still breathing <laughs> you it's know? like when we were making this decision about the business i was like it's a little worrisome to me how excited you are about this grenade <laughs> we're about to throw in <laughs> yeah, and I can't wait to share with you guys like how awesome this this transition and update has been and what we're doing because it's pretty cool and unique and um you know, we're going to start 2024 off at a at a really really high point. Um yeah, I am excited. Mm -hmm. I am excited because it it gives us the opportunity to just get better. Yeah. Right? Like um it, it forces us to pay attention mm -hmm. to the key metrics of the business. We've had conversations with people around details yeah. that we've never had before yeah. that like truly change. Like when we're talking about investing in the difference, like these are like the difference makers that really will take our business yeah. to where we're looking to go. 
But it's the same thing in life. Mm -hmm. I think it's the same thing with your relationships. I think it's the same thing with your kids. Like mm -hmm. it, it just goes down to like paying attention. Yeah. And, and you know, like when I was sitting on the dock and uh, I don't know what led me to do this, but like I woke up, the, the whole back of my house, as you know, is like all glass, right? Mm -hmm. So I woke up, I saw out there, the whole lake was covered in fog. And my first initial reaction was like, this is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> like, why can't I see my lake? <laughs> and then immediately I like, I came back to earth. <laughs> And was like, oh, wow, that was an awful <laughs> response. Reaction to the Mother Nature doing her thing. So out I there. put my fishing boots on <laughs> and I walked down to the to the dock because I, you know, I didn't want to get my feet wet. <laughs> um, it was cold. Grounding is really good for I you. I know, but it was cold. It was less about the wetness, more about the coldness. Okay, it was like 57, Mr. Ice Plunger. 57. I haven't, cold plunger. I haven't plunged in, in months. Is part, your plunge set up? It's not set up yet. It's part of the transition mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. And I walked down there and it just gave me the opportunity to like be grateful. And then it also led me to like this realization like, shit, like we're in fog right now. <clears throat> yeah. Slow down, lum less, pay attention in business and life and the economy and, and, and really everything across the board. Yeah. Um, three things I think we can really take away from this for those of you. And, and it's a good time of year too because we're going, we're, God, it's like we're almost halfway through November. It's basically 2030. <laughs> it's basically 2030. Um, but this is the time of year where we start as business owners making big key strategic decisions around what we're going to do in 2024, if you haven't already. Um, and a lot of those things come with like, okay, how are we growing the business? What changes are we going to make? And so this is a really, I think, great time for you to take a few of these things and implement them into your daily practices in your business and your personal life. Um, numb less was number one that I took away from this. So stop just filling time with busy work or other distractions and have some white space, some quiet time so that you can get creative. That was number two is like find the joy in the, the white space in your life. And then number three was slow down and pay attention. Pay attention to what's happening with you. Pay attention to ha what's happening with your team members around you or other important relationships in your life, um, your spouse, your children, because, you know, we're, we're all like animals at the end of the day. We feed off the vibes around us. Mm -hmm. And um, if you are emitting stressed, chaos vibes, everybody around you is going to pick up on that and internalize it too. You, you know what's a fun little like exercise? Mm. Um, I did this with Senna and it like freaked her out. <laughs> so the more like it, it, this is like those three things are incredibly difficult just for the record. Like don't go and expect to go have 30 minutes of white space. Like yeah. start with five. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, but like um, just look at somebody you love for like three minutes without distraction. Yeah. Without losing attention. It freaks them out. Really? Just like, like staring I just, at like, them? Like if I just like sat there and looked at you for three minutes. Yeah. Without saying anything. <laughs> yeah, you, that would you, freak me you'd out. You'd be like something on my face. <laughs> but the, the, like, that's what I'm talking about. Like like the, the distractions. Like we, yeah. we're wired to like create a problem. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm just looking at Senna and she's like, stop looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> then I tried it with Melissa. Yeah. And she's like, what? What? But like. Now, now when I do it, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Like I did it again. Yeah. And it became a beautiful thing as opposed to like a problem. Do you say anything? No. You just stare. I just, I just, like, I just like look at them. I, but I, I look at it with like this intention in my head uh -huh. of like gratitude. Do you respond when they ask you like, why are you looking at me like this? You no. Just, I just, I just look, look at her or look at you or I look at, no, just, just no, <laughs> no, no numbing. <laughs> Right. No reason. Don't look away. Don't blink. No reason. Uh, anyways, it's just a fun exercise. Try okay. it. Try it with Charlie. Let me know how it goes. Oh my god. He's gonna. I be should like, record what? this somehow. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Set up a little GoPro. That's awesome. Well, thanks everybody for being on the show today. Uh, we definitely appreciate you guys. Um, you know, this is becoming such a fun part of our of our week and our day, and we truly, truly enjoy having these conversations. And and hopefully, you guys feel the same way. So if you do. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, give us uh, a share, drop some comments, let us know what you think. And until next time, Bye. have a good week. <laughs>